we've always wanted to do something like this. The problem is, like, if you said I wanted to make a movie about all these hallucinogens, how do you set out to find a subject willing to do that? In that way, we're we're really lucky because we have a subject that approached us and said, "Hey, I want to go do all the drugs of the world." Hi, my name is Lee. I'm from Pictou County, Nova Scotia. I'm originally from Trenton. Almost all my relatives still live there. There's a few that moved away. My cousin Mike, he's from Thorburn. I grew up with him down there. Look, Lee. My mother lives there. <laughs> oh, she's quite the character. Mum was always the, the more liberal one while growing up and give us a little more freedom. What's that, Lee? Magic mushrooms. What? You're still doing magic mushrooms? Some <laughs> things never end. <laughs> I'm the beer, here comes your father. <laughs> Dad, he was, he was a little more stern and more of the boss, I guess you could say. I mean, I think we were brought up well, brought up to respect elders and, you know, don't steal, don't cheat. So I kind of lived by that my whole life. I remember parts of it, but I mean, I was very young at the time, so I just turned three or I was three and a half or something. Lee was three years old. Apparently I drank a bottle of cough syrup out of the fridge. It tasted like grapes. <laughs> I don't know, you know, where I was at the time, but however he got into it. Drank half the bottle, running around like a chicken with his head cut off, jumping up on the back of the couch, trying to climb the walls and, you know, act right foolish. Sticking the knife in the socket and laughing. Hi. <laughs> you know, that was his very first, I would say, hallucinatory. <laughs> Hi. You know, three. I'd say it was a record. <laughs> I like to dabble with my substances over the years. Sure, fucking add some mushrooms, guys. I work Monday to Friday. On the weekends, I like to let loose. It's like that with a lot of people. Too much is just enough for me. <laughs> At the same time, I still managed to get an education and keep a job. Uh, this one time, me and some friends, I'd be about 19 or 20, I guess. You know, we were just out tripping on mushrooms. and We were down by a ball field in Stellarton. There's a big hill there. At the bottom, there was some, you know, barrels. And just said, geez, it'd be funny to roll down the hill in a barrel. And the boys dared me to, and so I said, well, you go get the barrel and drag it up here. And I'll roll down, so they did. So I kind of stuck into the whole idea at that point. Kind of braced myself with my knees on one end, and so I was kind of like this in the barrel, and away I went. I picked up momentum, and it was kind of like, you know, as a kid, you used to spin around real quick to get that rush. Well, <laughs> well times that by about 10 or 15. So I can remember hitting that Hitting that ramp, and making air. It started going wonky and going like this. So, you know, at one point when I come down the barrel, I could feel my head crack on the ground. Luckily, that was towards the bottom of the hill. It was fun, I mean, it was fun. And actually, it's something I only did once. I don't know if I could do it again. It's pretty fucking freaky shit, actually. Oh, well, from the age of probably 16 to 20, it's just, basically one big acid trip. You know, it's not something I want to do today, for instance. It's something I might do on a Friday night. 
if I don't have to work on a Saturday. It's uh, one of those things, I enjoy it. I was always a bit creative, and it's just a matter of, you know, having the right direction and to funnel that creativity into something. Iran was a very interesting place. I mean, it's, how do I explain Iran? They had a saying, I forget the saying now, but it had something to do with, well, at night, God or Allah doesn't see anything, so. I was there to work, but, you know, I couldn't help but dabble in some of the exoticness of Iran, so, you know, they had probably some of the best hash. I've ever smoked. One night, this fella that I met there, he went to get me some hash, or I went with him, and we get back to the apartment, and uh, I'm there, I'm gonna smoke, have a couple hot knives or whatever, and it's this big chunk of gooey crap that, that I take out of this package, and what the fuck is this? This isn't hash. And he didn't know the name for it, and he was laughing, and then he drew a poppy, poppy pod, so I'm like, oh. So it's opium. This should be interesting. I never smoked this. So he showed me how you're supposed to smoke it and stuff. And it was just like that Pink Floyd song. I have become comfortably numb. It was just like I was floating. My hands and my feet. That's exactly what it felt like. At one point I was down on the beach and I was catching a pretty good buzz on and you know, I'm pretty stoned, you know, three days. I was, it was a little blurry, but I can remember at one point, this little crab comes up. He comes up out of the sand. It's like a red and white crab. And he comes over and he's, and he just starts attacking my feet. I'm like, what the fuck? Is this shit really happening? So I'm kicking this cra crab away and I'm freaking having a drink and it comes back and it just keeps, it keeps uh, attacking me. And then I'm like, curse at it. Get the fuck away from me, you little prick. It was almost like he understood what he said because he ran back across the sand and back into his hole. <laughs> Basically, I went to Mike and it's like, uh, yeah, you know, I got this crazy idea for a TV show, me going around the world and doing a bunch of drugs get fucked up. Basically, when it started, that was the premise. At that time, like, it was so new, it was just an idea, more of a joke. That kinda, as time went on, we realized, hey, this could be a good thing, and uh, maybe we can get it done. In the early stages of Trippin' with Lee, or when we first were doing footage, it was over a weekend, so that weekend, Wow, I pretty much was up that entire weekend partying. Yeah, never had a fucking wink sleep. Fuck. <sighs> the last shebang was Sunday afternoon. I tried the salvia. And at first it was just me gonna go out with uh, Adam, who was filming at the time. And I was like, shit, it'd be kind of neat if, you know, I could take my mother. Ha ha ha. And he said, man, are you serious? Like, that would be really cool if she would agree to come and film with you. So I was like, well, yeah, she just lives up here. So we went to visit my mother and she was like, yeah, I'll go out and film with you. It says those who are successful may require multiple large hits <laughs> from a pipe or a bong. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to come out here again with a big bong. Now, what's a bong? At one point, I was pretty buzzed, and it was like just me there. I didn't really notice Mom or Adam, and it was just me and basically nature, the nature around me. Like I felt like a piece of grass. <laughs> so we're kind of focusing right now on this one Peruvian trip. We'll travel into the jungle near Aquitos. I'll meet up with someone there. We'll do like San Pedro peyote, wormwood, which is absinthe, the ayahuasca. They call DMT the spirit molecule. This ayahuasca, it's supposed to just open you right up to the rest of the universe. Everything's 
you know, becomes alive, so you'll hear trees communicating and stuff. Oh yeah, sapo, it's frog venom. It's supposed to just clean you right out of any toxic substances in your system. They say after you do it, it's like you're 20 again. Maybe there'll be a barrel around handy. <laughs> no, just joking. It was just after we did the trailer, a couple months after that is when I took this stroke. I had this really bad form of arthritis. When I took the stroke, I was on medication for the arthritis. I believe that's what gave me the stroke. Basically, I had a cerebral blockage. I can't explain it. I seen the MRI photos. He basically showed me a picture of my brain. One side had all these white veins and one side was just black. <laughs> That's the best way I can explain it. I'm running on half a brain where I shouldn't be. A lot of my family, they don't understand, you know, what I'm trying to do. Out of anyone in my family, mom is the most supportive. I think Lee should absolutely do this. He's not doing street drugs and all that shit. Like, he's doing stuff that grows naturally from the earth. I believe in the natural ability to heal. I think everything that comes from this earth, fruit, vegetable, whatever, is for our benefit. And I think that it needs to be <clears throat> documented, and I think that it needs to be out there. It's like spreading the word, spreading the gospel. I'm really worried about Lee going on a trip like that. I'd rather see him bungee jumping or something. I think it'd be a lot less dangerous for him. I guess anybody who gets high enough on those drugs is going to reach the spiritual thing anyway. Just, uh, well, where he's gone. I think my father, he's more nervous about the, the whole trip rather than what I'll be doing. Poisonous snakes. I just hope he doesn't get bit. Or, you know, that would be the end of Lee. Maybe, just maybe, he'll get a cure for his arthritis. Wouldn't that be something? Taking the stroke, I realized there's a big part of life is death and dying. I may not be here in a year from now, so I kind of want to do as much as I can. Change my direction with tripping with Lee. Went from you know, going around the world and partying and having a good time to more of the spiritual side of it. Some of the stuff I'll be doing, I realize that, you know, it, it creates a lot of good. And a lot of these entheogens and spirit medicines like ayahuasca, there's a whole shamanistic side to that. They don't have to use some of the substances I'll be using, but it kind of always fascinated me. Some people I've talked to from South America that have done ayahuasca and some of these other spiritual medicines said it's basically a life-changing experience. I guess I'm at a point in my life where, yeah, I could use a little change. I think it'll make me focus more on the future rather than, you know, what's happened in the last five years. When you get that close to death, like taking a stroke or something, it's, it is life-changing in itself. I think you're foolish if it doesn't change your outlook on life. I think this documentary is gonna open my eyes to a lot of stuff I haven't realized about myself and other people in the rest of the world. Lee's quest is, a glo is the glorious of all quests. All right. Actually, he's the only—he's the only guy I ever knew who had a fucking quest. <laughs> yeah.